Harriet Way is a 52 mile circular route through some of the most beautiful scenery the UK has to offer. Join me as I navigate the rolling hills, rivers, towns and valleys of the quaint and spectacular Yorkshire Dales. Morning. <coughs> Morning glampers. Welcome to day two of the Harriet Way. Mate, what's the point in having a tent sometimes? It's dripping. Look at this. What is the point? See that? That's just water. It's just dripping on my head. So I had to hide under here because it's just soaking. And then these little whips of wind just shake it all off onto my bonts. Onto my like right onto my grill and I'm there thinking what's the like I would have been drier sleeping outside it hadn't rained outside but it is sodden I'm gonna say it. it's probably the worst condensation I've had to deal with in my whole camping life my sleeping bag is soaking it's just I know it's just a time of year and there's not much you can do look at it I, mean, I could use it to have a wash I guess it just makes it just a little bit harder, doesn't it? For like, because everything's wet now. Oh well, I have to deal with it. I don't know. Single wall tents. What you gonna do? We love you because you're super light, but we hate you because you're wet as a otter's pocket. Right, let's get up and see what this day has to offer. Get me out of that little soggy coffin. Glorious. My hands are freezing. Oh, I'm freezing. <laughs> right, let's get this packed away, man. There we are. Leave no trace. Ah, how do I get over this wall? And we're off. <laughs> Absolutely freezing, mate. Me digits. I'll have to put you away in a second. Oh, freezing. Everything sucks. It's one of them where it's got me questioning even my own hobbies. Not doing much filming at the moment because it is bitingly cold and it's it's really windy so it's probably not picking anything up. Woo. <sighs> it is glorious though. I'm on the Pennine Way. We follow this Pennine Way. I think it's about six and a half miles to the next town or village. It's gonna be a big day today. <laughs> this morning I had me questioning my own hobbies. I was like, do I even, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm lying in bed, there's like <laughs> a constant stream of water falling on my face. My fingers are freezing. I was thinking, what? <laughs> do, do I do this? I choose to do this. Ah. It's just the hardships, isn't it? It's just them hardships, man. That's what makes it... That's why I love doing stuff like this. Is it's not easy. You don't have it all your own way. And it just makes me appreciate a lot of things. <laughs> like not getting dripped on while I'm there. Uh, while I'm trying to sleep. How deep is it? Nah. What is it? Basically a puddle. It's a puddle. That's my path. Up there. The fog's rolling in now. You can't see I'm off up to the top of there. I'm at the top. That plateau there. And then I was guy camped on the next one down. So put a bit of a shift in. Ooh. I just sort of thought, I'll just get my head down and get over this top. I can't even, you know, you get lockjaw because it's cold. 
Look at all that going on. They've put some uh, some of these flags down. You lose them occasionally and then hit a bit of bog. And there's nothing you can do there. I've got my feet are wet, but I don't mind that. It's quite refreshing. And these white dumpy bags are sort of leading the way through the mist, acting as their own sort of cairns. I was hoping for some good views up here, but Mother Nature's saying keep it. She's saying keep it, have this fog, deal with this. Oh. Oh, here we are, look. Respite from the wind. Take bag off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can't stop for too long because I've got miles to do. And also it'll get cold. Oh, what? Am I out of water? No, phew. Phew. Cold. We're on the top of Great Shunner Fell at the moment. <laughs> the view, <laughs> there ain't no views. There's a bit of respite from that wind, and that's nice. I'm heading towards Thwaite, and hopefully, that'll have a little cafe or something so I can get a, a hot drink. And if that doesn't have out, then uh, we'll keep batting on to Keld. The aim is just to wild camp it, even though tent's just a big old soggy lobster's bum bag at the moment. You can't win, man. You can't win with condensation because you need more material <coughs> to stop the condensation because you need, like the, like the Hilliberg has and the Pioneer 2, you need them sort of caps over the top and loads of, so that the air can vent out and the rain can't get in. And then just a ton of mesh. I don't think you can. I just think condensation just part of the game, innit? But that was particularly bad last night. Because every time the wind would like whip it and then bosh, you just get a face full of water. Like it's. I was having some mad. Dr I was dreaming that it was raining into. I was like, oh, in my, in my, in my mind, I was like, oh, it's alright. It's just coming through mesh. It's raining through the mesh into my face. <laughs> Not good enough. Oh, I'll turn you off. I'm five minutes here, and then we'll plod on. Goodbye, refuge. Oh no, look at this. Come on, guys. I got you. Little rays of sunshine coming through. Look at that for a cairn. I've, I was just that. Come down this valley over here, and we're gonna go around in. I think we start to drop down here and round. I'm hoping that these clouds clear up. Great Shunner Fell is the third highest mountain in the Yorkshire Dales, and the highest point in Wensleydale and on this route. The Pennine Way passes over its summit on the way from Hawes to Keld. The popularity of this route has eroded vegetation from a strip 70 metres wide across the moor, which has been elevated since 1996 by the construction of a flagstone path. The sun just poked its head through. My digits are starting to warm up now. And the wind's died down, now I'm on this side. Now I'm on this side of hills. It's less gusty. Now I'm ready for a coffee. And whatever other delights I can find. I don't think Thwaite has got much going on in there, but we'll bat on to Keld and then refuel. Ready? Here we go. Back in little gate country. All right, lads. Here we are. Look, bit of bail band onto the loop, onto the hook, smashed into a bit of wood. This is it.
Gravity. It does a trick, doesn't it? Spot on that. Thwaite. Just passed through Thwaite. There was there was a cafe, but it doesn't open till eleven. And it's only quarter to ten, so sack it and we'll bat on to Keld so about three three and a half miles to Keld hopefully we can get some refreshments there but we've put a shift in we've maybe done about seven miles and it's not even ten o'clock yet so we're on track for a good day I've had to take coat off and do leg vents from coming up here man it's hot look at this just onto that bit of wire look fair dues refuge behind this wall out of the wind the wind's picked up again I've just been looking at my maps and my guidebook that's the guidebook for anyone who who fancies it uh, I'll leave a link for it below and I'm looking on the map and I can go down here and there's a little there's a little place with an alehouse and stuff called Mucker where I could get refreshments fill me water I don't have any water left I can fill me water up and then take the lowland valley through on the way to wreath and i think i'm going to do that instead of going over this top which reading the guidebook it says it, like he said it's uh it's quite bleak and it's quite open to the elements and quite boggy so i'm going to sack that off and i'm going to take the lowland through this valley and it looks delightful look as i'm looking at it now all the green pastures in the sunshine and then i'll keep heading on and hopefully get to wreath at some point this evening which has got several pubs shops and the lot and do you know what because it's my holiday and my wet tents in here if there's an alehouse and it's a reasonable price i'm getting in it and i'm also going to have a pint of timmy taylor's if they've got it if they've got timmy taylor's or they've got black sheep on i'm having it I'm going to have a few pints and I'm going to keep there for night and that's giving me a a goal <laughs> and I'm excited about it and that's the beauty of these trips as, as I've said many a time you just make it up as you go make it up as you go if you want a wild camp wild camp if you want to stay somewhere stay somewhere let it just unfold as it should right so now I'm going to head down here to a place called Mucker and see what they've got to offer. The earliest recording evidence of occupation in and around Mucker, and that's what I'm calling it, I don't know if you pronounce it like that, but I'm calling it Mucker, takes the form of a skeleton found with flints on Mucker Common in the early 20th century. Details suggest a burial of Bronze Age date. The name Mucker is of Norse origin, derived from the Old Norse Mjör Aker, meaning the narrow, newly cultivated field. Medi! He's a proper sheep, proper Dale sheep. He's so much calmer in this valley. Oh, you don't have a biting wind. The only thing about being down in the valley is, I'm assuming when I go through these fields, it's going to be very gate heavy. It's just them little gates that don't have latches and locks on them. They're just, and it's a real thin little effort to get through. Oh, I'm feeling good. Got myself a soup. And a sandwich. Look, cutie. Where's your mum? Oh. Oh, are you alright, darling? Hello. Hello. Okay. It leads to nothing. Oh, mate. This is it. I'm gonna have to get wet feet here. Right. Damage limitation is the name of the game here. It's not a case of if I stack it. It's when. There's no way I'm getting across here without wet feet. Let's see if we can not get the trousers wet as well. Yeah? <laughs> ah. See, this is what happens when you try and... Uh, when you're making it up and coming off the beaten track, this is what happens. I just can't see a route through this, man. Not without... Well, I'll keep going. I'll try. It's slippy. I'll try, 
not to get wet feet. I'm not going to do it, am I? I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to just get in. Sod it. He's doing it. Oh, that's no. No. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Amateur hour. Well, oh well. Oh, it was deep. Deeper than she looks. Slippy. Oh, and it's cold on shin bones. This is exciting though, isn't it? Eh? Whoa, bit of vegetable soup in me and I'm, look at me. I think I'm Bear grills. I'm going for it. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Ah. Yes, did it, ma'am, across. There you go, not too bad, was it? River crossing. Now, have I shot myself in foot here? I think I might have shot myself in foot. The track I need is up there, and I'm down here dealing with rivers and walls with no gates in them. Now I want a gate. Mad oak. I've left the Pennine Way and I've now joined up to the coast to coast, which is delightful. There's so much going on. You've got they're not fruiting yet, but they've got wild strawberries, wood violets, dandelion, primrose, wild garlic, sorrel. Ah, it's a banquet. Mentha aquatica. Water mint. Such a lovely smell. Oh. Ooh. Medic! As well as a shit ton of gates, there was also a lot of barns, like every field had a barn in it. So I did a little bit of research and, uh, and this is what I found. The parish of Mucker has hundreds of small field barns or cow houses, as they're known here. They formed a unique style of farming which probably started in the 17th century and continued on into living memory. Milk from the cows provided an important income for farmers, especially when it was turned into cheese and butter. Winter in Upper Swaledale is harsh, so the cattle were brought in around November and tied up in these little cow houses. They were fed from hay stored next to them, cut from the surrounding fields. And in spring, the cows were let out to graze on the hillside pastures. The muck from the cow houses was spread into the meadows to help grow new season's hay. Excuse me, thank you. Thin. Look how thin that is, man. It barely fits my leg in it, look. A real squeeze through it, bag on. It's still very windy down here. I've just passed a sign that says three and a half mile to Reef. Well, is it the same here? I'm off for a pint. Whoa! No! <laughs> Nearly! Sorry. Nah. Have to go for it. wide boy look, whatever. UK garage. <laughs> Banter's a bit shit. Uh, I'm sorry for that. What can you do? We can't always bring the game. Look at this though. Walking on this wall. Just taking on some road work at the meadow at the moment. It shot me onto the road. Been batting down here for a bit, but cars are going quick. I'm just reporting in to say that there's an out to report. I've just skimmed a few stones. <laughs> Did a few good skimmers, if that's if that's of interest to you, all you hiking fans. <laughs> I've just had a I've just 
<laughs> I've just nearly stacked it, if that's of any interest to all you camping and hiking gurus. Following this river has just been a pure delight, mate. It's been glorious. Just ambling down here. And I'm fully in the, in, the, in the swing of it now. I've had a lot going on at the moment. I've got a lot of things coming up and I've got to move and there's a lot coming up anyway. And uh, I find that when, I'm, when I've got a lot on my plate, I have my jaw just like, I don't realize it, but I just like, gr gr I clench my jaw and all my <laughs> neck tights. I'm like, uh, thinking too much about things I've got to do. Where is oh, this little bodgy? I don't mind that's not them other little ones were doing my nappering, but that's all right today. Especially we're just walking down here by this river, my brain's finally switched off. I've just done about two or three hours there without realizing it. Just my jaw is relaxed, my neck is relaxed, my mind is relaxed. I'm just like just hiking I'm just in the moment and I'm hiking because it's been a long day so I'm pretty tired and it, my mind isn't able to worry or stress or plan or do anything like that because it's just it's tired it's all hands on deck so it could just sort of switch off <laughs> it's like a zombie almost but in a good way and that is one of the reasons why I love doing this it's getting to that sweet spot of tiredness where everything else just washes away because you don't have, you ain't got the, you know, they ain't got the privilege of having to worry because you're just knacked. So you're just like, whatever will be, will be. And I'm in that zone, so I've not been chatting much. Maybe shy of 30, but if we're up there, we've done a quite a fair trek, I think. Damage report. All good. Just like, the usual wear and tearing thigh, in thighs, and then that's it. I'm absolutely fine. I'm looking forward to getting to Reith, Aretha Franklin, to see what delights she's got to offer. Again, I'm just gonna switch off, mate, and I don't, I don't want these hiking videos to be me just constantly trying to justify my decisions as to why I'm not wild camping. Because that's just how it is, mate. What I'm thinking, I could I could get to Reef and then I could bat on and pitch up up top in wind, knowing that it's gonna be pissing it down tomorrow and set up this wet tent and get in my wet sleeping bag <laughs> and just do nothing and that, that's it. Or maybe have one of my uh, freeze dried meals that I've had loads of already, sick of them. Not on this trip, but on all other trips. I could do that, I could. And I'm sure it would make for a better video. You know, people want to see me in my tent. Well, a lot of people do anyway. But I out here, mate. First comes my my adventure comes first. And then if a video materialises from it and it's good, so be it. But doing all that, getting it wet sleeping bag, that, that right now when I think about that, jaw starts stiffening back up. I'm like, ah, not for me. I don't want it, it doesn't give me excitement. But going to try and find a B&B &B or an alehouse or something like that to get tucked into and then um, a pint of whatever's on offer and some food, that just fills me with excitement and joy and that's what it's about and so that's what I've got to do, don't judge me, see you later. <laughs> Reef. It's got a couple of ale houses. It's only a small village, but it packs a wallop as far as amenities go. Spent some time in saddle like, but it's gonna be good to dismount and get a, just get my bag off and chill out. I'm only gonna have an ale if they've got something special on. I'm not gonna bend the elbow for any old beer. Not enough water, just filled one bottle up at that uh, tea room. And that's lasted me all day, just been sipping at it. I'm well thirsty. 
So it's dangerous in it. Get yourself a pint. Don't, never. Here's a top tip for you that I very rarely use, but never quench your thirst with booze, especially with pints, because they just we go down like a granny on a frosty morning, just straight down, cutting the dust. Next. Get yourself a pint of water for, <laughs> this is me, you re I'm, I'm telling you, but really I'm just reaffirming it to myself. Get myself a pint of water first, then make a, then decide. Reef this way, here we go, look, follow these two. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's nice in Reef, mate, that wind. Oh, doesn't seem to be as windy in Reef. It's beautiful. Oh, do you know what, mate, that's it, man. Get yourself a beer garden, innit, look at it. I'm gonna find a beer garden, I'm gonna find some beer. Let's go. This for a slice of heaven, man. Ice cream parlor, whatever that is, post office. The Black Bull, Ale House. The King's Arms, Ale House. What's that, the book? Looks like an Ale House. I'm having it as an Ale House, right. The book looks the nicest because it's in sun. That's got all scaffolding on it, so that's not really doing out for me. The amenities are just too much. <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm malfunctioning, I'm glitching. I'm staying here. Whoa, shit. <laughs> I'm glitching. Oh, right, I'm staying here. Let's get tucked in. Morning, we're up and at them. I've left Reese in the rear view mirror. Yeah, I managed to get a pint in the beer garden, which was lovely. And uh, I had a little bite to eat, which was, I mean, I am gonna, like there's three or four pubs or whatever and places you can drink and eat in Reef. So I'm not gonna throw them under the bus because they're all just small, independent businesses so I don't want to slate them because it wasn't their fault I guess but that was the mo <laughs> I had a meal and it was so it was comically bad it's so comically bad that it went full circle and became good and I enjoyed it for like the sheer how mad it was and how bad it was I ended up enjoying it so can't grumble <laughs> uh. I mean, I'll give you an idea, I might cut this out, but because if it's too harsh, I don't want them to suffer because they were lovely and stuff, but the meal. I thought, oh, I fancy just like some light, like a, a little starter. Tempura king prawns with like a sweet chilli dip in sauce was on the menu. I was like, oh, that sounds, that sounds nice. And I'll have that. And they came out and they were just basically what it was. You know, crab sticks. It was basically crab sticks in pastry to look like a parsnip with a sachet of cheap, like, chilli sauce. Oh. And I was like, and I just thought, you know what? I, sur I gave up to it, I surrendered to it, because there's no point in being unhappy, is there? Sending it back and be like, oh, hey, mate, what the fur? Everyone's trying to do the best in life, and I just was like, if it was a little bit shit, I would have maybe said something, but because it was just so mad and bonkers, I just thought, you know what? I found my people. <laughs> I'm having it. Uh, anyway, so I yammed it down and uh, that was wonderful. I had an early night up this morning. Woo! Had a lovely breakfast and then I'm off. Heading towards Aysgar Falls to my van which is mad because I'm going to be coming I'll be coming at my van from the opposite direction as I left it and that's circular hiking for you guys it's forecast to piss it down today so my, I don't know mate this one and I haven't really been bringing the chats on this one but I've been enjoying it we're off up there over at tops don't know what to expect I've plotted it I've plotted the route in myself with a few little detours and and whatever. It's not the I don't think it's the same as the normal route.
Medic! That's where I had my pint in that white house there. The village green. Medic! There's Reef. I'm gonna get off onto the moorland. And we're gonna head over the moor. My guts are done in from there. Uh, I think from them tempura prawns. Just done me in. <sighs> I don't feel too clever. What's them geese? Swans, geese, geese. Medic. There's actually too many medics. I'm having to. There's too many. You can't. <laughs> I love a good medic. As much as the next man slash woman, but it's too much. It's too much. I can't take it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, I keep looking out for cars and that. Do you know what? This is it. On this one. You know like, I always look for signs and stuff on my hikes. What's it teaching me? Uh, what, you know, what have I got to learn on this hike? <laughs> and this is a, this is it. It's overdosed me with gates and locks and latches overdosed me with it to the point where I'm like Ugh, not another one and it's done the same with medics just one after other too much too much and it, what there's signs isn't it saying have you had enough I think I might then if that's the, if that's the signs it's like um, I think I might need to just chill out a little bit. <laughs> Stop hiking so much. I mean, let's get to the day out way first before we make any rash decisions, but I'm definitely thinking I need a break from it. I'd planned on doing quite a lot of long distance hikes coming up, like it's the season, isn't it? But the signs of like, I mean, I'm gonna unpack this nearer the end. At the moment, the signs are saying it's just too much. It is, I mean, what? it's funny when you see a summit and you're like, medic, it's kind of funny and it's good to look at good latches and locks and that, but yeah, you can't just do it all the time, can you? You need a break from stuff or it's just not funny anymore. Or is it? Keep going, do more. Double down. <laughs> I just want to be known as the guy who does gates and medics. It's been nuts how many there's been. I just think maybe it's, uh, the universe trying to say like just chill out mate because i just i was i was coming up there i'm like i'm seeing like animals at the side of the road i'm getting my camera out going medic and then i did one and i was like this is it's done now isn't it you can't keep doing it maybe do it once in a while as a little treat but no you can't keep you can't keep replaying the same old thing so we're evol ever evolving it's like with beer reviews and then i used to do beer reviews a lot and then people i stopped doing them people are like oh bring back the beer reviews no we're evolving and then when you do if you do it it's like a little nod back in it it's refreshing and it's good so i think we're gonna we're gonna mix it up stay tuned for my makeup and uh, cooking channel da -da 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 -da. I'm dizzy, I am well. Not well in noodle or it belly. Woo! Hey, baby. They build these for grouse. Quick scoop with digger, bit of tarpaulin, line it with concrete, bosh, rainwater will do it rest. And then grouse can just drink from it. God, it's a crazy day, man. He's doing everything, this guy. It's just, but the overriding thing is this wind. I've had to put my hood up because it was blazing into my ears and giving me earache. I'm having to rethink my whole life. <laughs> ah, we're not going to stop doing medics, are we? Oh, Gates, do more. Absolutely lean into it. Rinse it. <laughs> Over that next valley. Oh, 
boggles. Fresh boggles. That's feet wet. See the clouds darkening up behind me. Temperatures dropped, and I wouldn't be surprised if I get wet. Do what you want. <laughs> Do what you want, mate. Because end the end is over there. The end is just over that ridge, I think. I've not even used my walking poles yet. I don't think I will. So it is quite an easy trek. So if you're new to hiking. Or you just want to get yourself like a, a nice two night, three day, four day hike. I recommend this. I recommend the Heriot Way. It's got just a nice little mix of tiny little villages, rolling hills, woodland. It's like a, uh, I don't know, it's nice. It's a really good one to showcase the dales. Because it's a, a circular route, you just leave your car in car park, £17.50 for a week. And do it over four or five days, mate, if you want. Take your time, stay in some hotel, pubs. Or just crush it out in uh, two and a half days. It's up to you, but it's definitely worth it's definitely worth it. If you especially if you live around here in Yorkshire, it's an often overlooked hike. Uh nah. See you later. Finally, dropped down off the tops and out of that wind. Castle Bolton. Castle Bolton, sounds like some off Game of Thrones, doesn't it? Bolton Castle is a stark and imposing medieval fortress at the entrance to Wensleydale. Begun by Richard Le Scrope in 1378, Scrope was Lord Treasurer and Lord Chancellor to Richard II and one of the most powerful men in late 14th century England. Medic! 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 Car park's just down here. It's gonna be a wash with bluebells. Oh, it's so cool coming back into the car park from another direction, mate. It just feels good. And that was a lovely little adventure. It was only three days, nothing too wild. As I say, the perfect little, uh, like if you're just getting into wild camping and hiking, it's a perfect little loop hike. I uh, tell you what, I won't be sad to see them. Where actually am I? I'm not sad to see back of them little snappy gates either. <laughs> they can keep it for a little bit. At the beginning I'm all like, oh they're brilliant. We'll get them, we'll film them by the end of it mate. If you're coming on this hike, prepare for a lot of little snappy gates. A lot of death. There's a lot of death on this one guys. <laughs> I need to go have a bath. Just re-relight my chakras. There I am, back at car park. <sighs> Beautiful little hike. Oh it's got a tea shop. I'm gonna get myself a brew. Thanks for joining me on this one. I'll leave you in the capable hands of future me for map time. Au revoir for now. Welcome to the final map time. Everybody's favourite time. I woke up here, soggy as you like, off we trot. And we're following the Pennine Way, so it's a bit, it's a pretty good track. There's plenty of flags being put down. You occasionally lose them and get a bit of a bog foot, but compared to how it was back in the day, it's pretty good. On we go. 
to the summit of Great Shunner Fell. That's where I sat and had a bit of respite from the wind. And we go past this huge cairn, some lovely views over Thwaite and the valley from up here. And lovely walking. Once I got past this cairn, down the side of this hill, I was sheltered out of the wind as I came down here, which was a joy. Along we go, over this ford, along, and then we hit the road into Thwaite. There is a tea shop in Thwaite, but it doesn't open till 11 o'clock. The Pennine Way and the Coast to Coast and the Heriot Way all pass through here, so it's a good place to get a brew and some refreshments if it's past 11 o'clock. But it wasn't, so on I went, over these fields, back into gate country we are. Bit of an elevation up here. And this is where the weather changed man, it came, it became sunny but the wind picked up as well as I started to ascend. Up here you can see the elevation line so it is getting pretty steep up as we go up here. And this is where the wind was getting a bit too much, I had a look at my map, let's just zoom out for you. So instead of going up here and round, I went down and cut through the valley, just to get out of that wind. Down I come, I'm going to call it mucker, I don't know what you call it mucker but I'm calling it mucker mucker. Now there's a, there's a pub. There's a tea room and a shop here, so a, a very good place to stock up. On I went, and because I, <laughs> because I've made this up, I had to do a little river crossing. You can see this river here, so I had to get a bit, <laughs> I had to get a bit of a sog on across here. But that's all part of the adventure. And on I go back into gate country, man. There was lots of little gates along here, but glorious hiking by the river swale, and it was lovely to be hiking. The same path that I took when I did the coast to coast through Gunnerside. There's also a pub here. I'm not sure if it's open full time, but it wasn't open when I passed it. Through more gates, and I just lost myself along here, man. I won't do much filming. I was just in my own noodle, just happily ambling along, following the river. I mean, onto the road. But there's like a little woodland at the side of the road with a path on it, so you don't have to be on the actual road. It's quite a nice little walk, actually. I follow that along. Off you come. Up onto this wall here, and around. And into glorious Wreath. I stop for refreshments, and I stop for the night in Wreath. Up bright and early, and fuelled by a full English. Off you go. You follow this road around. There's a, quite a nice little bridge here, over the bridge. And then we're back off. Back onto the road again, then there's a path at the side of the road, it looks like it's road work, but it's not. There's a little path up onto this road here. Very quiet, no cars past me as I was coming up here. And lovely views back over Reith and where I'd come from. And then we leave the road onto open moorland. There's a lot of grouse shooting along here. Little hides for grouse, little water baths for grouse. Down we come, there's we're like a hunting lodge or something down here. Had a little look through at windows, now going on. Carry on, wind had really picked up by the time I got round here, so I was glad to drop down into Castle Bolton. Through Castle Bolton and past Bolton Castle. Come off the road, and you start to descend through these fields, through a little woodland, through this farm, skirt around this woodland, and you keep coming. You could stop down here for a brew or a meal or whatever. There's a pub there that does coffee and whatnot, but I chose not to. But down the side of these houses, through these fields, through this little woodland, and you're back. Back to the van. And what a journey. As I said before, this is the perfect little hike for people just starting out in multi-day hiking. There's plenty of options to stay at pubs and there's plenty of decent wild camping spots as well. So you could take your time and do it over four or five days or you could just crank it out in two days and just spend one night camping. It's completely up to you. So yeah, I hope I showcased the Yorkshire Dales for you and I hope I've maybe even inspired you to take on the Heriot Way yourselves. There we go. Right, I appreciate all the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.